All right, guys, I'm going to do a pretty decent video on uh, dual battery installation for Shrek. Uh, seems like a lot of people are interested. Anyway, this is a Moto battery tray, all stainless. I bought off of Amazon for 35 bucks. I'm using an interstate battery. Um, I'll show you that later on in the video, but I, all you guys on the trader and, uh, and uh, the uh, Zuzu forum know on Facebook already know what I'm using so I cut it down I left it a little bigger what I'm gonna do is um, you can see I chopped it and then I peeled these back I'm gonna pin those here like that with a, uh, a small bolt on both sides and then underneath what I'm gonna do here is I've marked them in all the holes I'm gonna drill through um, probably so towards this end so that I can extend it if ever I want to extend it and this end is going to go towards the um, the fan so I've got a little room that way in case I get a bigger group battery or something like that so um, this is the work in progress obviously I'm going to deburr this and all that um, I'm, I'm there what I'm doing with this now is I've taken it hold on one second and you can see now I've, I've uh, I've relocated the power steering pump closer to the engine. I've relocated the bracket for the um, Apollo. And now the Apollo bracket is hard to see, but hold on. Let me move this stuff. The Apollo bracket is lined up with the inner hole. I'm probably going to square that inner hole off. We'll see. Um, three and a quarter. 3.250 silicone tubing will fit right over that piece that comes with the uh, with the snorkel. I took out the interior piece. You can see she's gone, and uh, you know it doesn't do me any good. So from the outside of Shrek, I've got nothing in, internally in the fender well. From here over to here, it's gone. Just here is a stub. Like I said, it's a. Uh, uh, a three and a quarter uh, silicone tube will fit right over the stub sticking out. This is just a new stainless steel bolt that I've siliconed with uh, flat washers on both sides and a lock nut. Siliconed it on both sides too. When I when I the goal is when I put a, a piece of carpet over that, I want Shrek to stall. Um, I want it completely sealed. So what I'm going to do here is um, this is on the K and N Apollo. This is four inch. So I'm going to go with um, a four to three and a quarter reducer right here. And then I should be able to go a 30 right into um, a little stub of, uh, uh, of three and a quarter connector or whatever they call them, joiner, the aluminum joiners, uh, to join uh, the reducer to a, a 30 degree elbow and then the 30 degree elbow um, will be a three and a quarter. I'll just use a straight uh, joiner for that and go three and a quarter by, I think it's like six inches, silicone straight in. Um, I'm gonna try and put hose clamps on everything with silicone. Obviously on the joiners you need hose clamps. Uh, all these connections, everything you see is gonna get siliconed. I decided to keep the OE because it's just easier. Um, on the on the three fives, you've got you've got this right here that goes to the valve cover for your breather. You've got a temperature sensor coming in here. That's kind of doable. Um, I like the fact that it's flexed right here because it lets me turn my angle. And uh, then you know my OE mass airflow sensor. Nobody really makes a connector for this OE mass airflow sensor. So the the way I'm doing it now. It just makes my life a little easier. I did buy this uh, reducer from K and N, and um, you know, I'll uh, I'll uh, keep joining this up together. Okay, guys. So I'll be joining a couple of these videos together in order because um, I don't want them to make them too long. Um, like I said, I uh, I have plans on on this as as it is now. It's out of my way. The power steering reservoir is out of my way. I still have to make a bracket for the overflow for the radiator. Um, but here's what I got. Um, I ended up with this. Let me get this out of my way. I ended up with a nice giant space down here. Okay. 
Um, what I'm going to do, I, I uh, took one of my rubber lifting blocks um, and I, it let me put the tray in flush because, you know, you've got, you've got the um, uh, wheel well, the front of the very front of the wheel well here. So um, this lets the battery tray, which I'll show you right now, uh, sit in. Now, one second, guys. It lets it sit in flush. Then I brought it all the way back. I'll take a few. I'll show you from a different angle here. No, one second. All right. So that lets the battery tray sit in flush, and it gives me um, just about nine inches. Yeah, that's nice, right? Anyway, from here to here, um, which is just borderline, probably very close to the LE. I want to lower the battery a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I pushed it all the way up to the fender, to the inner fender. That's where the original hole was right there. So I pushed it up both ways and I took a black marker and I marked it down here and down here. And when I remove the battery tray, you'll see that I have an angle mark. I'm going to die grind that and pop and push it down. I'm not going to cut it out. I'm just going to push it down. That'll allow me to lower... Uh, the battery tray by at least a couple of inches and uh, it'll sit a little bit lower once I get to know what height it's going to sit at I then have to make a bracket that goes I'm looking to use that bolt right there because it's a nice little flat spot and probably make some kind of square tube um, bracket and then I was hoping to come off of one of the existing um, uh, nut certs like this one right here which uh, these are pretty strong and come over to the tray. So I'll have to figure something out, but I want it mounted strong. I can also do an angle iron, a piece of angle over to the corner of the inside fender well. That's, uh, that's where I'm at right now. I'm just getting ready to die grind it. And when I'm done die grinding it, I'll show you guys where I'm at. And, uh, and uh, I'll just keep adding to this. And then when I post it, I'll post it in, uh, on uh, YouTube as one big long video. All right, guys. Uh, you'll see it. You'll see it cut a, a couple of times, and I'll just keep joining in. All right. All right, guys. So here's what I did. This is just temporary. Um, I'll show you from the underside on the fender. <clears throat> here's the inner wheel well. So I just bent a little tab down. Not unlike that one I did over there to access the rear valve cover gasket bolt that you can't get to. Um, once it's all said and done, I'm going to tack these. This will probably need to make a little fab. I don't want to drop too far down into the wheel with anything like that where, you know, my, my tire is going to end up hitting something. But um, you'll see once I give me two seconds, I'll put the battery tray in the hole and give you an idea of where we're at. So just by just by doing that, you can see that I've substantially lowered the battery tray. I think I had like, you know, it was eight or nine inches earlier. Hold on one second. Get the tape. And now you can see I've got a good 11 and a half, 11 inches to the uh, to the top of the uh, uh, core support right there. So that's plenty of room. The battery's only like eight inches to the to the see, so to the terminals. The battery's to the top of the terminal. It's nine. So that's going to give me plenty of clearance. Um, down here is you can see now I'll eventually this piece will stick out but I'll fab here and here and I'll make a plate and this bottom piece I will bend back up um, I may trim it so it fits nice and tight and utilize that tack back in and then maybe do something with the remaining metal up here or just buy a piece of you know sheet and put it up there and tack it but uh, that's that's neither here nor there. Now you can see he almost sits he almost sits down on that stud. 
which it's really hard to tell, but just inside there where my finger's pointing is, is the little stud and I've got maybe an inch. And that's what I was thinking is off that stud. Even if I use a piece of, uh, you know, I'll show you. Pop out the tray. So, hey, back up there. Even if I use a piece of inch square tube or three quarter or whatever, thin wall, whatever, and I make it say from my thumb over that way, maybe six inches, it'll go that way, okay? And then the battery tray will sit on top of it, bolted at least through it, I'm probably drilling tap. And you can utilize those bolt holes or slots, um, which is my plan. And then something else, either off the inner fender here, or off of one of these other existing nut certs that Isuzu gives you. And uh, once the battery's in, then I'll find out where I want to put the uh, radiator overflow. Um, once I once I do use the silicone here, remember that's going to be a four inch to three and a quarter silicone reducer, and um, it's only going to be this big and then get smaller. I still have room back there where I can definitely you know put the overflow bottle you know, just above the cables, make a couple of brackets and have it sit pretty close to where it used to go. Um, as a matter of fact, one of its bolt holes is right there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it against the inner fender wall. Uh, the other one's down there, you know, being used right now. All right, I'll uh, catch you up in a little while once I get a little further on, all right? Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this is helpful. All right, guys. So this is what I meant. I don't know if you can see it in there, but um, that's just a temporary little stanchion, three quarters of an inch, and it's going on that flat spot I showed you in the early, earlier portion of the video um, with an M8 bolt going right down through the, the nut sir. All right, I'm gonna do that out of, probably gonna do it out of one inch tube uh, and I'm going to go straight uh, towards the front, towards that, towards that blue plug over there. Um, this way, uh, I get a little more stability out of it. Then i got to figure out something else coming off. You know, let me go around the top. Either another one on the bottom down here somehow. Um, sorry about the, the video there. Or uh, over here we've got, um, you know, plenty of places that I could just make a strap. Or, or a couple of straps and go to. I can also go through the slots down there to whichever one's hit metal and then just put a, you know, some type of uh, stanchion like I just, or, or a spacer or a sleeve or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, the right length. I can buy brass or whatever and just cut them to fit. Um, and then you can see there's a couple of places where I can go right into the, uh, right into the metal. Any of these right here, like right down here, if I just drill straight through, I'm going to come out in daylight and I can just put a bolt right through there. That'll get stronger and stronger. Um, let me show you what it looks like with the battery in it now. If you just hold on one second. Hold on. Whoa, there's my giant big gulp. You know where I got all this energy from. Hold on one second, guys. So that's just a rough look at what it's gonna do with the one stanchion obviously you got the plastic handles on there but I like to keep them and I just push them down and put them under the battery hole down um, this way when I go to remove the battery it's still there but I'll probably just do something like that with it anyway um, that's where I'm at right now I got to do make it a little bit more stable the ground lug is gonna go going to go off the negative terminal straight down uh, I'm either going to go to the ground bus over there or probably just to the frame over here as long as electrically on the meter they're 0.06 or less 
I'm good. It's the same point. Uh, so I'll probably just take the path of least resistance and go right through uh, a shorter run on the ground as possible. The positive, she's going to run around following that loom, jump over to the AC on the you know probably on the top and then it's going to come over here uh, somewhere over here I'm going to put the battery um, isolator combiner um, in hindsight I should have made that another six inches bigger um, over here and I could have just mounted it right to the board with the rest of the stuff still an option I may end up doing that anyway because it's you know a couple of holes but um, still thinking it through as I go uh, that's where I'm at right now. I'll add, add to this video and keep on going. Keep watching, guys. I hope you like it. Thanks.